Well-known American politician and now chairman of Smart Approaches to Marijuana, or SAM, Patrick Kennedy, is in town today to speak about marijuana policy. SAM is a group dedicated to a health-first approach to marijuana policy and openly against the legalization of marijuana. Mr. Kennedy, thank you so much for joining us on BC One. Thank you, Jeff. All right, uh, first things first, tell us what brings you to our fair city today. Well, I think it was ironic that your story just preceding me was about education because how good can it be for our kids to ach achieve their uh, educational attainment goals when there is a, uh, a wider availability and promotion of a drug called marijuana that is going to impact their cognitive development, their brain development. So uh, my wife's a school teacher. You know, teachers in my country are starting to get docked calling it pay for performance. In other words, if they can't get the kids to learn at a certain trajectory, their pay gets cut. Well, when these kids have so many drugs being, you know, foisted on them because there's advertising dollars, selling them alcohol, selling them cigarettes, now selling them uh, marijuana, particularly in uh, Colorado, I, I just think that it just becomes overwhelming on our young people. And I don't think that's good for our, our future. And certainly it's not good for education because kids can't learn if they're high. All right. Uh, I, I read this morning that uh, yourself and your group, you're watching Washington very closely. You're watching Colorado very closely. And you expect bad things to start happening. What are you seeing so far? Well, I mean, you just only need to use your common sense. I mean, marijuana um, is, affects your brain. It maybe makes you feel good if you have anxiety and depression in the short run. But it's going to really interfere with your ability to cope in the future. And unfortunately for people who have a predisposition towards addiction or mental illness, if more people are smoking, more people like that are going to get exposed and, and more of them are going to befall these kinds of uh, tragedies that come with uh, psychosis from uh, using marijuana or the kind of cognitive delays that we have seen in these longitudinal studies in other parts of the world. So um, it's just about trying to stem this from ever uh, getting out of control. And I, I really worry about the commercial aspect of this because with legalization, you're now going to have a commercial interest in targeting, marketing towards kids. You know, you're going to have this great packaging, celebrating using marijuana, much like liquor is, is advertised. And I just don't think it's good for our country to have more of these things kind of targeting vulnerable kids, particularly those that are going to be uh, vulnerable to addiction and mental illness. All right, and uh, moving back to our country, there's a very vocal pro-pot lobby here. Uh, quite a lot of people would love to see it legalized here. If you've seen uh, Van downtown Vancouver uh, during the 420 annual celebration, uh, there's, there's at least 20,000 people show up every single year for this. Uh, what do you expect the effect, how do you expect to be received here? Do you feel like you're walking into the lion's den? No, I mean, look, in, in my country, what we did with tobacco, I mean, it's unthinkable. 20 years ago, you smoked everywhere. Today, people kind of look down on people who are smoking cigarettes like they're victims of uh, tobacco marketing. I think we can change this as well. I mean, who would have imagined that we would have ever gotten a, a jump on big tobacco? And we finally did. It took us 60 years, and it took us years of them lying. And uh, I think we're going to see the same lies come out of the new big tobacco, and that's uh, big marijuana. And so that's why we need to stop it from ever coming about in the first place. All right. Now, was this uh, fin final question for you? Is this something that uh, did? Is this a, uh, an idea that you came to gradually over years? Uh, you've had some well-publicized uh, issues with substances. Is this part of it? Is this part of your personal journey? So I was the author in the United States Congress of the law that requires the brain be treated like any other organ of the body. In other words, if you have a brain illness, uh, like a mental illness as I do, depression, I have addiction and alcoholism run in my family and I've suffered from it, then we need to treat these chronic illnesses just the same way as we do diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, all of the other uh, illnesses. And so this has been my passion, and it's inconsistent to promote better mental health uh, when you're also having an industry that has a commercial interest in ruining your mental health, basically, in addicting you, because that's the way alcohol makes its profits over people like me who don't know how to stop after two or three drinks. I mean, we just drink until we're, we're blind. And 
That's how the liquor industry makes its money. And that's how marijuana is going to make its money. They're going to not make their money off the people who smoke a few joints every other weekend. They're going to make their money off the kid who is anxious, depressed, who's sitting at home and just smoking this very powerful genetically modified marijuana. Or, by the way, eating it or drinking this THC. Because this new marijuana is in all kinds of forms, including e-cigarettes. It's vaporizing. I mean, we just don't even have an idea as to what we're getting ourselves into by this whole movement to commercialize this new drug called marijuana. All right. Thank you very much for your time. That's former Congressman Patrick Kennedy, and that's a uh, viewpoint that we don't hear too often up here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff.